Hey, what's up guys? So today we're gonna review CSCS chapter 10 together. Um, this chapter is about nutrition strategies for maximizing performance. Um, if you want to start uh, from chapter one, I have a lecture playlist on my YouTube channel. So feel free to go back to whatever chapter you wanna start at and go from there. But today we're gonna go ahead and study chapter 10 together. All right, so the big picture for today's content we're going to be categorizing them as pre-competition, during the competition, and post-competition. Um, there's also going to be quite a bit of numbers that you will have to be very familiar with in order to pass the test. So we'll definitely go over them in detail. So let's start with pre-competition here. The goal is to maintain adequate hydration and carbs in order to maximize blood glucose and store glycogen levels so you can use them as energy sources during the competition, um, both in muscle and in liver, is where we're going to store these energy sources, right? So what happens if you train with low glycogen? Um, it can suppress the immune system and lower your CNS functioning, right? CNS functioning meaning your fight or flight response, which is very important during the competition. Um, consuming carbs will also rapidly increase the insulin and initially drop that blood sugar. Um, and general guideline, general guideline, right? Uh, we'll go into much detail about this later, but one gram of carbs per kilogram body weight, right? So let's just say, for example, someone weighs 70 kilograms, that's 70 grams of carbs two hours before exercise, right? Pre competition. So for someone who weighs 70 kilograms, you want 70 grams of carbs pre-competition. Now, with carb loading, right, um, depletion of muscle and liver glycogen could lead to fatigue during long-term aerobic endurance exercises. We'll be talking a lot about endurance athletes in this chapter especially um, because um, loading carbs, so carb loading before the competition and preventing these depletion of muscle and liver glycogen is that important with endurance athletes. So if we're looking at three days of high carb diet, like I said earlier, the general guideline is one grams of carbs per kilogram body weight. But if you're looking at a high carb diet for endurance athletes here, we're looking at 10 to 12 grams of carbs per kilogram body weight. So same thing, if we're looking at a 70 kilogram uh, endurance athlete, we want them to have 700 to what 840 grams of carbs um, for three days. That's a high carb diet, right? And we also have 8 to 10 grams of carbs per kilogram body weight, and that's the standard. So, important numbers here to keep in mind. All right, looking at a table here, table 10.1. This organizes how much carbs we want to intake um, before the competition in a chronological order, right? So let's just start with four hours or more before the competition um, because we want to categorize them as four hours or more before the competition, two hours before the competition, less than one hour, or a little more than one hour, sorry, before the competition, and then this is when you will be competing or you'll be playing your sport. And so four hours or more before the competition, the general rule of thumb is one to four grams of carbs per kilogram body weight, right? And then um, here they talk about protein as well. So you want to do 0.15 to 0.25 grams of protein per kilogram body weight. So important numbers to remember here as well. So it's very different from a general guideline. Now we're going into and focusing on the specifics um, with these timeline numbers here, right? So four hours or more. And then at two hours, you want to do one gram of carbs per kilogram, right? And then finally, uh, if you have a little more than an hour left during or before your competition, you wanna do 0.5 grams of carbs um, per body weight kilogram, right? So here's a sample pre-competition meal for someone who weighs 150 pounds, and that's 68.2 kilograms. So if you 
work with the numbers here and 0.5 grams that adds up to 34 grams of carbs so uh, it might be very important to work with numbers here um, the test could ask you here's an athlete that weighs this much um, how much carbs is um, ideal or how much carbs should this athlete ingest two hours before the competition right so there are your numbers there all right moving on to during the event right nutrition as we all know is very important factor during aerobic endurance events that are lasting longer than 45 minutes i mean it's very important in all sporting events and for all performance athletes but um, that's just the definition that the book gave us here um, so endurance events intermittent activity sports or multiple events a day um, they talk about sports drinks a little bit here um, sports drinks with six to eight percent carb concentration would be ideal is what they're saying um, children let's just say a child weighs 40 kilograms um, they should drink five ounces of cold water every 20 minutes during practice this number is important because hydration is very important right so during the competition if they are playing soccer match um, and they weigh 40 kilograms they should ideally drink five ounces of cold water every 20 minutes during that game or during that practice um, we'll also talk about aerobic endurance sports here um, as we all know each carb has different rate of oxidation so consuming multiple sources of carbs um, from multiple different food sources um, can increase that rate of carb absorption also adding protein to carb date uh, carb diet sorry um, is going to result in increased time until exhaustion so it's not just um, carb that we need to ingest before and during the competition but it's also very important to add protein to your diet as well for strength and power sports um, we'll say powerlifting event or powerlifting competition for example um, high amount of muscle glycogen is used during the event so it's especially important to replace that fluid and electrolytes that we lost during the competition all right moving on to post competition here the goal here is to rehydrate and replenish glycogen stores and repair those muscle tissues that might have been damaged so if we're looking at high intensity in intermittent sports right um, immediate recovery is very important and you do that by fully replacing that glycogen um, that's a very important factor there and then strength and power sports the speed of leucine delivery leucine one of the most important amino acids that make up that protein is going to be the determining factor for acute changes and maximal stimulation of muscle protein synthesis so how fast can we deliver that leucine is going to be extremely important in maximal stimulation of the muscle protein synthesis protein at meal time general rule of thumb here 20 to 30 grams of protein per meal um, after the competition is considered a golden rule a golden standard um, and meeting eating meals every three to four hours is going to import, be important as well all right so lots of words and lots of numbers here let's focus on what's the most important um, we're looking at aerobic endurance performance and recovery we're looking at hypertrophy athletes muscular and athletes that require great muscular endurance and athletes that require uh, great strength right so different athletes that have different demands for their sport so let's look at endurance athletes first um, focusing on the recovery aspect um, aerobic endurance athletes need to consume 8 to 10 grams of carbs and then 1 to 1.6 grams of protein um, per body weight like we talked about especially if training for 90 or more minutes so this is post competition we'll say 8 uh, it's kind of hard to see change the color here 8 to 10 grams of carbs 
1 to 1.6 grams of protein. And this is all per body weight, right? Kilograms. So that is something you definitely want to remember, that number 8 to 10 grams of carbs per body weight, and then 1 to 1.6 grams of protein. Um, everything else here is something we already talked about. Um, like I said, athletes who eat at least four hours before competition should include approximately one to four grams. We talked about that, and you guys can kind of read this part here. But the most important thing here um, is that eight to ten, and then one to one point six. All right, moving on to nutrition for hypertrophy. Hypertrophy, if you want to grow your muscles, um, between thirty and 100 grams of high glycemic carbs should be consumed after muscle damaging exercise um, to reduce that muscle protein breakdown, right? So you wanna rebuild that pro or muscle after you have broken the muscle protein down. And 20 to 30 grams of higher leucine protein every three to four hours. Like I said, this is something that we already discussed. Um, we know that leucine is one of the most important amino acids um, that's part of building our muscles. And so here are just the numbers, right? 20 to 30 grams of higher leucine protein every three to four hours. All right, moving on to muscular endurance. Um, the most important thing here to note is maintaining adequate hydration by preventing water weight losses exceeding 2% of the body weight. Finally, moving on to nutrition for strength athletes. Uh, the most important he thing here to note is in general, strength and speed athletes should consume five to six grams of carbs per kilogram daily. So a little lower than your typical endurance athletes. And everything else you can kind of skim through. Um, another important thing here, 1.4 to 1.7 grams of protein. Um, per day, right? So that's very similar, a little bit higher of protein than your endurance athletes. So knowing what kind of athlete the person is that you're working with and matching that with what kind of nutritional demand they need to meet in order to succeed in their sport is extremely important uh, factor to consider while studying for this chapter. All right, moving on to nutrition strategies for altering body comp. If you have a client, you have an athlete, you have a patient that comes to you and they want to change their body composition, here are the steps that you need to um, follow, right, uh, according to the book. So first, you have to estimate their calorie needs, right? How much calorie do they need? And then everything else here is how much calorie they spent in what way right so there's the bmr which stands for basal metabolic rate and that's how much calorie is required for maintaining normal body functions like breathing right so even when we're just not doing anything technically we are still burning calories right so even when we're just breathing um and that actually turns out to be the largest um constructor to energy expenditure every day during our day and so that's important to know right bmr second largest contributor is going to be energy expended in physical activity so when you participate in physical activity when you go jogging when you go walking swimming you burn calories right so that's the large second largest contributor and then there's also the thermic effect of food so energy that's expended when we digest food that also matters um energy expenditure above resting metabolic rate rmr that can be measured for several hours following a meal right so all those are things to consider um cunningham equation is what we use to estimate that resting metabolic rate rmr and that is five five fifty plus 22 times lean body mass that's just the equation that um we use to measure RMR and that's called Cunningham equation. All right, so um, the last thing here is one met. Um, 
MET met is what we use to measure um, how much energy we spend. So now we're going to talk about calculating BMI. Um, this is important. You need to know this equation. Um, and luckily, it's very simple. It is going to be weight, which is kilograms divided by your height, which is in meters squared, right? And that's going to be your BMI. Whoops. So let's just say um, the person weighs 60 kilograms, right? And their height in meters is, let's just say, 1.5 meters. You need to square this. All right, so 60 divided by 2.25 is what we want and if I do that math right now it comes out to be 26.66 so we'll just round that up 27 and so you find that number here in this chart and 27 falls under overweight right so that's just how you calculate your BMI and how you find and categorize yourself in the chart and that's important so make sure you know how to do that and lastly let's look at eating and feeding disorders uh, there's two types of major disorders that we have to know for this chapter there's anorexia nervosa and bulimia nervosa anorexia nervosa is defined as distorted body image and intense fear of gaining weight um, there's two types restricting type where they're fearful of eating more food and then there's the binge and purge type where they eat a lot and then end up purging that food and then there's also bulimia nervosa which is a recurrent consumption of food in greater amounts right congesting a lot and then purging and yeah that is it for chapter 10 i hope that was helpful if you guys have any questions feel free to leave it in the comment section down below i'll be happy to answer them and i'll see you guys next time